Good morning or good afternoon. I am Yvonne from Colorado, and today is Monday, June the 8th. I want to welcome you to today's Midday Prosperity Mindset Coaching Call, brought to you by the Unit of Prosperity. Today's coach is a devoted husband and father who walked away from his well-paying job as a truck driver to go after his dream of being his own boss. He now earns multiple six figures online and has created amazing tools and training products to help others create their own wealth. He is a creator of Five Star Profits, Dropship, Mogul, Elish. Pro and 5,000 Facebook friends, but this weekend, he blew us away at the UOP Internet Marketing Mastery Conference in Chicago with the release of his brand new video marketing course called Total Tube Takeover. If you miss that event, all I can say is do not miss the next one because you miss out on a lot of value and fun when you miss a UOP event. This guy right here is also a beast at phone prospecting. In fact, you're invited to dial back in to this same number tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern where you will get to listen in as he dials live phone leads. But right now, I want you to grab a pen and some paper to take some notes as he shares with us his topic for the day, Do You Have It? It is my pleasure to bring to the call Atlanta's own shirt and tie guy, Mr. Jacques T. Morris. Jacques, are you ready? I am ready. Can you hear me? I can hear you, and the call is yours. All right, very well. Thank you for that awesome introduction. As always, Miss Yvonne from Colorado. And I uh, just want to let you know, man, it was a pleasure uh, hanging out with you as well as the other UOP council members this past weekend in Chicago, Illinois. Well, Illinois. However, I am very thankful that now I am back home in Atlanta, Georgia. So I want to say hello, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone that is on the call today, regardless of where you are at or what time of day, night. Or whatever it is, again, I just want to say welcome, man. So happy to be here in Atlanta, Georgia. Love Atlanta. Hopefully you love your city, too, and where you reside. All right, so today's call, you know, because I like to do different things. Yeah, yeah, you know, I just like to be different. You know, I'm a shirt and tie guy <laughs> here in Atlanta, Georgia, and I just like to do things a little different. So today's call is going to be a little different. However, there are going to be a lot of similarities if you've ever been on any of my other training calls before. Additionally, I want to encourage you, if at all possible, to stay to the very end of the call because I'm going to share something with you that I may never share again, so be sure to stay when? To the end. How long do you want to stay? To the end, to the very end, like so far to the end that you don't even hear my voice anymore and you're like, is he going to say something else? That's how far to the end I want you to stay on today's call. Now, if you're listening to the recording of this call, Guess what I want you to do? I want you to also stay to the end. <laughs> All right, so today's topic, do you have it? It, I-T, two letters. That's a word. Do you have it? Now, actually, um, it was interesting how I came up with today's topic. Let me just share this little story with you. Yesterday we were headed back, or, or better yet, last yesterday evening, rather, we were headed back to Atlanta from Chicago. Well, there was some bad weather up in the Midwest, which caused some horrendous delays at the airport up there. So we had got on the plane, and we had got on the taxiway, and I seen all these planes that were out there that were lined up ready to take off. And the pilot comes on and says, hey, we have more than 40 planes on the, on the runway that are ready to take off. So we're in line. It's going to take about an hour. Actually, it took an hour and a half, you know, before, before we finally took off. So I was sitting there on the plane. I was like, man, you know, what is something that I can do to pass the time? So I asked that question on my Facebook wall. Do you have it? And that is where today's topic came from because I wanted to get feedback from those that were on my Facebook friends list with regards to what they thought it was referring to. So when I ask that question, do you have it, I know that your mind can think or come up with more than probably a 100 different things. And the reality is when I ask that question in a general sense, whatever answer you come up with is true. You know, commonly, though, many of us refer to it or the it factor as something that's known as swagger, something that's known as confidence, something that's known as that thing or that something. You know, that's what we typically refer to it as. 
Well, we're going to go a little bit deeper, and we're actually going to purposely explore the word, the two-letter word, it, a little bit more today. We're going to be a little bit more creative with the word it. We're also going to be a little bit more appreciative as well as thankful in our lives for it. And again, it could be a number of different things. Now I know you probably saying, well, man, Jacques, I know how Jacques is. You know, man, Jacques's about to go too deep. Now, granted, deep, I mean, not deep, but it could be very, very deep. I mean, it really could. But we don't have time to go too deep. And again, want want to keep you on a level plane here today because, you know, we're not going to take you up to 35,000 feet. However, what I do want you to know about it is that it is real. And hopefully you got a pen and paper to take down some notes because I'm going to share with you some, you know, a couple really, really key points today. So first, let's start with kids. I know there's probably not any kids on the line. If there are some children on the line, man, like kudos to you because I know the ki most kids are out of school. So, hey, the kids can get on the midday coaching prosperity call. But anyway, I know a lot of individuals that are on the call actually have children or they actually have kids. So let's, you know, start with kids. Now, if your kids are anything like my kids, and I mean anything like my kids, <laughs> and I love all three of my kids, like absolutely love them, they're wonderful children, they make excellent grades, and when I say excellent, I mean if not straight A's, then all A's and a B or two, so yeah, love my kids, love my kids, however, my kids never stop asking for it, they never stop asking for it, now again, what is it? It can be whatever we want it to be. In the case of my children, it seems to include everything. They never stop asking for food. They never stop asking for clothes. They never stop asking to go places. They are always constantly asking for it, and there is no shame in their game. A little cliche phrase there, no shame in my game. Look. Kids, they just don't have any shame. I can tell them no. I can explain why I said no, and guess what they do? They will retire until a more convenient time. However, they are guaranteed to come back and ask for it. And what is it? It is whatever they want. Whatever they want. And they have no shame in asking for it. And granted, like I said, just hang out with me here today because I'm going to bring all this together and it's going to make sense. And it may even open up your eyes. It may open up your mind. It may also open up your heart. However, most of most importance, I want it, IT, a very small two-letter word, to open up your life. Now, as parents, what are we really, really obligated to provide our children with? Obviously love. So, you know, we're going to say, hey, love is obvious, so we're going to take that off the table. Well, again, if you're a parent and you're like me, and your children start asking for it too much, I am very quick to let them know I am only under obligation to provide you with food, clothing, and shelter. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's all I have to do. That is my obligation. Now, of course, as a loving parent, I provide them with a whole lot more. However, those are the basic necessities of what they really need and what I provide them with or what all parents should provide their children with. Now, let's think about ourselves. And, again, we're getting ready to step it up here a little bit. What is it that we really need as humans? As adults, same things, basic things, food, shelter, and clothing, basic necessities of life. And if you're on this call, it is my genuine belief that you have it. You have it. You have the basic necessities of life. However, my question to you is, how thankful and appreciative are you for the basic necessities and aspects of life. Ask yourself, 
how thankful and appreciative am I for the basic necessities of life? And why do I say basic necessities of life? Because as humans, <laughs> our wants and desires are never ending. However, however, our needs are limited to a very few. Again, do you have it? Do you have it? If you're on this call, I'm, I'm of the genuine belief that you have it. I'm very confident that you have it. What is it that I'm referring to right now? Food, clothing, and shelter, the basic necessities of life. Again, I asked you, how appreciative are you for those basic necessities and aspects of your life? Let's go a step further. In order to live and breathe, we need it. What is it? Do you know? Do you know what it is? It's oxygen. Yes, it's oxygen. Some people might just say it's air. <laughs> but we're going to be a little bit more specific and defined in our assessment of it in this particular instance. It's oxygen. Do you ever think or even contemplate, though, how precious it, speaking of oxygen, really is in your life? Do you ever really sit down and think and contemplate, man, I get to breathe oxygen, or I have oxygen which allows me to breathe and allows me to function as a human on a daily basis. Do you ever really sit down and meditate or contemplate about oxygen? Do you? Most of us, I would venture to say no. Why? Because it's free. We don't have to pay for it. We don't have to spend a lot of time for it, put forth a lot of effort to obtain it, and therefore, we don't give a lot of time and attention to it. In so many words, it can even be said that we undervalue it or really don't even appreciate it for what it is. Think about it. What do you really, 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 really have to do in order to get oxygen? You got to breathe. You got to breathe. Very, very simple. However, again, we take it for granted because it's something that unless we're choking or something like really, really dramatic happens, most of us do it on a daily basis, consciously, subconsciously, sleep, awake, or whatever, without even thinking. However, here's a very, very simple fact of the matter. Your life, my life, anybody else that's on this call wouldn't be in existence without that ability to breathe oxygen. So my question again is, are you thankful and are you grateful for the ability to be able to breathe oxygen and have it flow through your body on a daily basis? Now again, I'm sure you're saying, of course I am, Josh. Of course. I'm happy. I'm grateful. I'm thankful to be alive. Again, the very basic necessities of life. Do we have it? How appreciative and thankful are we to have them? Now let's dive into some fundamental principles because if you know me, if you've ever been on any of my teaching, any of my training, yes, I can get in-depth sometimes. Yes, I can share various strategies, very te various techniques, you know, various life experience. However, one of the things that I truly, 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 truly enjoy sharing from the bottom of my heart are principles. Why principles? One, because that's what the Bible is based on. I'll like a ton of principles. And principles, they don't change. They apply all across the board. All across the board. Now, as humans, and again, this is just a principle, we all have it. What is it? It is a two-letter word. Very small word, but we all have it. What is it in this particular reference? It is the ability, the resources, and the wherewithal, yes, the wherewithal is a word. Let me spell it for you. W-H-E-R-E-W-I-T-H-A-L. You can go Google it. <laughs> it's a word. It is a word. So as humans, we all have it. What is it? It is the ability, resources, and wherewithal to do, achieve, and or become whatever we want. Wow. As humans, we have the ability, resources, and wherewithal to essentially do, be, and or achieve whatever it is that we want. 
However, here's a question. Why do so many of us lack and or underachieve? You see, each and every individual that is on this call has the ability to achieve a six-figure income in the next 12 to 24 months. Now, you probably say, John, why do you say six-figure income? Why did you say 12, 24 months? I don't know why I said it. I just like numbers, okay? <laughs> I just like numbers, and I wanted to clearly define some of those numbers on this call today. So that way you can fix it in your mind. Each and every person on this call today has the ability to achieve a six-figure income in the next 12 or 24 months. However, the vast majority won't. They won't. They will not. I'm not saying that they can't. They just won't. So the question is, why is it? What is it in this particular reference? It is referring to why they will not achieve what they are more than capable of achieving. Why is it? Because many of us, we will tell ourselves and we will make excuses as to why we can't. That's what we'll do. We'll tell ourselves or make excuses as to why we can't achieve it versus writing down what we want to achieve and or creating a hundred different reasons why we can. Again, we, we, we've been programmed. We've developed a habit. It seems natural to make excuses and say why we can't do something versus writing down what we want to do and a hundred different reasons why we can do it. Totally different mindset. Some of you may be having a mind shift right now. You see, a lot of times we make excuses like this. We'll blame others. We'll blame our circumstances. We'll say we don't have the resources or we don't even, you know, some, some of us may even say, hey, you know, and I know I'm good at this one. This is one of my favorite ones. I'll say I'm not very technically inclined, which is true to an extent, but that's true just because I don't choose to be technically inclined. I can do whatever I want. I just don't choose to. Therefore, I just say, hey, I'm not very tech savvy. Anyway, <laughs> if you don't have it, I want you to think about this. If you don't have it, why don't you create it? If you don't know it, why don't you choose to learn it? If you are not it, why don't you choose to become it? If you want to make it, and in this particular instance, I'm talking, when I say it, I mean money, why don't you go earn it? Again, if you want to make it, it being money, why don't you go earn it being money? If you don't want it, then why don't you get rid of it? You see, a lot of times we talk about various situations and circumstances and sometimes even people in our lives. Well, guess what? Just as we have the ability to create and bring things into our lives, we also have the ability to delete and or get rid of things and people in our lives. Now, at this particular point, if you don't take away anything else from this call today, I want you to please, please, please write this down. I want you to write this down or I want you to remember this. If you don't take away anything else from the call today, write this down or remember it. It, I think, can be whatever you want in life. It, I think, can be whatever you want in life. And the vast majority of the time, you, more than anyone else, have the most control over it. I know I said a mouthful, therefore I'm going to repeat it for you, and I really want you to get it. It can be whatever you want in life, and the vast majority of the time, you, more than anyone else, have the most control over it. So here's my question for you. 
What is it that you want to do with your life? What is it? And again, only you can answer that question because only you truly know deep down inside, be it in your mind or be it in your heart, or be it in the lower resources of your kidneys, what it is that you really want to do with your life. So again, I asked you, what is it? Very small two-letter word. However, I'm referring to your life, and you get one to live. Now, I know what I want to do with my life. And guess what? I'm doing it right now. However, I want to challenge you, each and every person that's on this line, to clearly, to, to clearly define it in your life. Again, I know what I want to do with my life. And guess what? I'm doing it right now. I knew today that I wanted to come out here and share this information with you. And that's what I'm doing. That's what I choose to consciously do with my life at this very moment. However, I want to ask and challenge each and every one of you to clearly define what it is in your life. Now, again, I understand I could go a hundred different directions with this car with reference to it. However, when you take away the principles of what I teach and what I share, again, those principles apply across the board. Let me ask this question, and what I'm going to do, let's see, I actually want to get somebody to come out and answer, so I'm going to just put the call in the Q&A mode, and if you want to answer, just hit star six. Let me put it in q and I told you that this call is going to be a little bit different today. So, okay, I'm going to ask a question. If you want to answer, and I'll take, I'll take five answers. I'll take five answers. You just hit star six and, and just give me your answer and then hit star six to mute yourself back. So here's the question. I'm only going to take five answers. What is the one thing that we, as business owners or entrepreneurs, think that we lack more than anything else? Let me repeat the question. What is the one thing that we as business owners or entrepreneurs think that we lack more than anything else? I'll entertain no more than five answers. Hit star six if you want to come out and answer that question. Money. money. All right, I'm ready. Uh, uh, okay, so I heard money. Uh, let me get one more answer. Freedom. Wait, wait hold, hold on. Well, what did the lady say? Time freedom. All right, time freedom. So I got money. I got time freedom. Anyone else? Financial. Financial freedom. Okay, financial freedom. Anyone else? I'll take two more answers. Actually, influence. Influence. Excellent. All right, I'll take one more. Oh. You said under what? Funding. Funding. Okay, funding. So, okay, all right, very well. All right, excellent. So let me put it back into. So when I ask that question with reference to business owners and entrepreneurs and the one thing that we like more than anything else, and I listen to the various answers, which were about five, the most common of those revolved around money. The most common of those, and again, it could have been a number of different answers, but the most common just in five answers, revolved around money. Why is that? Why is it that many of us as business owners and entrepreneurs don't have the money or the funding that we feel like we need? Well, guess what? This is probably going to be a revelation for some of you. Most of us don't have it. And again, it, I-T, the two-letter word, in this particular instance is referring to money that we don't have as entrepreneurs or business owners. Most of us don't have it. Why? Because we are afraid to ask for it. Write that down. Most of us don't have it because we are afraid to ask for it. You see, many of us greatly devalue our time and our self-worth. We settle for it which is whatever someone else wants to give us 
versus asking for it, which is exactly what we want. Again, this may be a little deep for some of you. Again, if you were not here at the beginning of the call, you may be like, hey, I don't know what Jock is talking about. All he's saying is it. That's all I'm getting out of this call. But if you get but however, if you're getting the principle, then you understand it and you know exactly what it is that I'm speaking about. Think about this for those of you that have jobs. And again, I've had many, many jobs, and I can relate to this very, very well. On your job, you have a boss, a manager, or a supervisor. And this boss, manager, or supervisor says that, hey, I'm going to give you a raise. And you know what? We're grateful for that raise. We're appreciative of that raise, and we're satisfied to receive that particular raise. I guarantee you this, though. Many of us, even though we may have said it in our mind or in our hearts, probably when we were given a raise, we never probably asked for more. Many of us. Some of us probably have, but most of us probably have never asked for more. We've probably never justified our value and expressed why we deserve more. Remember I said... Or let me say this, if you don't ask for it, how can you realistically expect to receive it? If you don't do it, or if you don't deserve it, then you can't ask for it. See how all that works together? Do you really see how all that works together? Now. I'm going to share this with you. And I learned this this weekend. Man, this was like phenomenal. It was phenomenal at the event. Many of us, again, we say that we don't have it. And again, we're still referencing money. We say that we don't have it. However, get this, get this. We have money for whatever it is that we want. We have money for whatever it is that we want. How many of you have cable TV? I mean, some type of cable TV. I'm not a big uh, TV watcher. You know, I, I do love sports. The only reason, and I kid you not, and you can ask my wife, and, it, and some of you met my wife this weekend. You know, you probably even sent her a little bit more on Facebook, but I want you to ask her when you see her. Ask her this. Kid you not. The only reason we have cable in this house is because my wife wants it. Therefore, I'm not going to say I, but I'll say we. Because, see, you'll go ask my wife, then you'll get me in trouble. <laughs> and then I'll say the only reason we have it, or, or the only reason we have it is because she wants it and we have to pay for it. See, I'm not going to say because I have to pay for it, you know, put myself on a pedestal. Like, I'm just right here paying for everything. I'm going to say we. You know, that because, like I said, you're not going to get me in trouble with my, with my wife. <laughs> so, anyway, let me get back to the point of what I was making, the, the point that I was making. Cable TV costs you money. And you pay that money for it because you want it. Because you have built a perceived value of it in your mind and justified it to yourself even though you don't need it because it's not necessarily producing you income and it's not necessarily anything that you can write off on your taxes. It's not necessarily an asset. But it's what you want, therefore you pay for it and you come up with the money. Create the money. Again, as business owners, what did most of us say when I asked that question? We said that money, funding, was something that we lacked. However, we have money for whatever it is that we want. And if we don't have it, because in some instances we just honestly don't have it, guess what? We know someone that does. And if we ask for it the right way, then we can obtain it. Wow, I bet you never thought of that. Well, I don't have, somebody else has, and if I ask for it the right way or if I do the right thing, then I can obtain it. So what determines what we want? Well, I already mentioned it. It's our perception of the value this weekend. One of our speakers, Mr. Myron Golden, emphasized over and over and over and over to us from the stage that people pay for value. People pay for value. I want you to write that down. People pay for value. 
ask yourself about all the things that you pay for, or maybe uh, not all the things, but just think about some of the things that you pay for on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis, and a yearly basis. And ask yourself, why do I pay for those things, and what is the perceived value of them? What is my value or assessment of those things? Why do I pay for them? It will blow you away when you look at all the money that you're actually spending on things that you have a perceived value of that really are not helping you reach your goals and helping you accomplish it, which we'll get to that in just a minute here because we're going to quickly switch gears and I'm going to wrap up this call for today. And, again, I want to let each and every one of you know that I thoroughly – I appreciate you hanging out with me thus far. So, what I say? Most people don't have it. Why? Because they are afraid to ask for it. But if we go back to earlier in the call, what did I say about kids? They ask, 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 and even when you tell them no, they keep on asking. Why? Because they are not afraid. But for some phenomenal reason and transition that we go through as we start to age and become adults and we get grown and we think that we're all that and that we don't stink anymore and that we can't be told no anymore, we become afraid of asking for it and it is whatever it is that we want. Kids are not afraid. You were not afraid when you were a kid. But now you're an adult, you're afraid. You're afraid of being told no. Why is that? Well, I'll let you figure that one out on your own because otherwise we'll be here for a couple of hours. <laughs> All right. Let me share this with you. If you leave your life and your business to chance, then chances are it will not happen the way that you want it to. Let me share this with you again. Excellent point. It's going to hit you right between the eyes. Because, you see, if you're in business, your business is going to happen. <laughs> now, you, you may fail in your business. You may go out of business, but it's going to happen. If you're living life, your life is going to happen. It's going to happen to you. It's going to happen around you. It can happen for you. But, again, it may not necessarily be what you want. So let me repeat this for you. If you leave your life and business to chance, then chances are it will not happen the way that you want it to. Remember I asked you earlier to clearly define what it is as far as your life is concerned. So again, ladies and gentlemen, don't leave your life, don't leave your business to chance. Clearly define it. Write it down. Create specific reasons as to why you want to achieve what you want to achieve and when you want to achieve it. Listen, there is a ton of it in life. And again, in this particular instance, it can refer to a number of different things. Only thing you have to do is find someone or something that can help you to acquire it. Or you can become it if it's not, if you or it is not already existing in your life. People will help you to achieve it. There are organizations, there are individuals, you know, there are resources that will help you to achieve it. If it's something that you need to become, then guess what? You need to work on yourself. If you're not already experiencing a certain result, then guess what? Again, go create it. You can become it. The biggest it, though, that I personally want to assist you with is your belief system. Yes, your belief system. Most people don't believe it, and that's why, ladies and gentlemen, you do not achieve it. Most people don't believe it, and that's why, ladies and gentlemen, they don't achieve it. When I was younger, a teenager, I read this book, very familiar book. I'm sure the vast majority of you on this call have heard this, heard this particular book before. The book is not anything new. But it's Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. I read a phrase in that book. It said, whatever a person can conceive and believe, they can achieve. Open up my mind. You, like, like some people refer to being brainwashed. Well, you know what? At a very young age, my brain was washed. Yes, it was cleansed. Because at a very young age, I read that book, and that one thought let me know that the only limits that really could be placed on me were the ones that I set on myself 
by means of it, and in this particular instance, the it was my belief system and or my mind. Whatever a person can conceive and believe, they can achieve. The biggest thing that Jacques T. Morris, Atlanta's own shirt and tie guy, wants to help you out with is your belief system. Because if you believe it, you will fire your boss. If you believe it, you will achieve whatever level of success in business that you want. If you believe it, you will create loving, lasting relationships. If you believe it, you will be at your company's next event. And trust me when I tell you, events are so powerful. If you believe it, ladies and gentlemen, you will take back control of your own life and live the life of your dreams. You see, each and every person on this call has it as long as you are willing to control it. Again, what is it? It is what you really want in your life. Notice I said want in your life. Because, see, you already have the majority of what you need, if not everything that you need. It, in this particular instance, is whatever you want. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to write that down. I want you to write down the fact that you, or better yet, I want you to write down, I have it, and I am willing to be in control of it. That's what I want you to write down. And, and somewhere in parentheses or at the top of your paper, put it, I-T, equals my life. But see, not only do I want you to write it down, I want you to go one step further. I want you to go out and make it happen. ASAP. <laughs> now, I told you to hang out to the end of the call, and the end of the call is when I actually stop speaking. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in case you didn't catch my name, it's John T. Morris. Atlanta's on shirt and tie guy. <laughs> anyway, we do these calls Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I definitely, definitely, definitely want to encourage you to come back tomorrow at 12 p.m. as we have another midday coaching call for you. Now, remember, I said stay to the end of the call. See, some of you are already leaving the call. You're just like hard-headed. You know, like you, you, you don't listen. And then when you don't listen, you, you, you miss out on something. You stay to the end because you never know what's going to happen after the lights go out. You never know what's going to happen after the doors are closed. That typically is when a ton of things happen that you never see or never experience. Why? Because you were not present. Anyway, so we're at the end of the call. And, again, I said stay to the end of the call because I have something that I want to share with you. Do you have it? What is it? What is it in this particular instance? Because during the course of this call, I had a number of different things that I shared with you that it could reference. Here is it. And hopefully you got a pen and paper to write this down. The ability to do public speaking. Do you have it? Do you have it? The ability to do public speaking. Listen, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a 12-week comprehensive speaking and public speaking and training course, if you will. Well, I'm going to teach you how to develop that skill set that has already earned me over $100,000 in the last 18 months. But also, as I look forward to the future, it's a skill set that has the ability that is that has the ability to earn me. And again, I'm just going to give a rough estimate in the next two to three years over a million dollars. I don't know about you. Again, I don't know about you. I just don't know. But if you would like to develop that skill set, and again, this is the first time I've ever shared this with anybody. I don't know if i ever do it again. But here's what I want you to do. If, only if you want to learn more, I want you to send me an email. I want you to send me an email. And I'm going to send you some information back in 48 hours. So don't message me, Facebook me, email me or anything. Come out when am I going to receive the information? I said you'll receive the information in 48 hours. Send me an email. Here's what I want you to do if you want to develop the ability to do public speaking. 
send me an email. Here's what the subject line needs to say. Speak, S-P-E-A-K, with S-T-G. If you don't know who that is, that is the shirt and tie guy. So, email subject line, speak with STG. Here's what I want you to put in the email. I want you to write three paragraphs or more as to why you want to learn how to do public speaking, and you cannot say anything about money. Because if you say anything about money, you're disqualified. So I'm going to repeat that one more time for you. Send me an email if you want to learn how to do public speaking, and, and I'll send you some details in 48 hours, with the subject line that says, Speak with STG. In that email, I want you to write me a minimum of three paragraphs as to why you want to learn how to do public speaking, and in that information, you can absolutely not say anything about money. Why? Because when I learned how to do public speaking, ladies and gentlemen, I was not motivated by money. So again, I want you to dig deep. Anyway, I want to thank you again for staying with me on this call. Totally awesome call, totally awesome content. I want you to go apply it. I want you to go change your life. I want you to be back tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, you deserve it. I am Jacques T. Morris, Atlanta Zone, shirt and tie guy. Have an awesome Monday and a totally awesome week because you deserve it. And it, ladies and gentlemen, is the best. Have a great day.